Hi everyone. Hi. Okay. Uh, my name is Hong King. I from. I work in the company called SB Digital. Uh, okay. So today my talk uh, is about reflection of a project developer a retrospective. So what this talk is about uh, is my life journey as a developer over the years. So this is what. It's going to be out. So this is my name. I work at this awesome company. So we are hiring people developers. So if you're interested, so please come to me or Michael or some of our, my fellow colleagues. Okay. So overview about me. So so this talk is uh, be roughly about me and some learning points that I pick up over the years. Is like uh, some uh, things that you don't learn in books. I realize. So it's more like uh, really about. Uh, experience like uh, you fail, you fail a lot. I really fail a lot. So, uh, so you, you learn by failing. So this is what uh, I want to share about. So and some takeaways you can learn. So I started off uh, with Flash AS3. If you remember the glow days before uh, Steve Jobs decided to kill it for real, and yeah. So I, I started with AS3 with good hopes like oh it will be a next. Big thing, you know, I'll be in for that. Like S3 is all the way flex, you know. Uh, what about HTML CSS? You no, know, it's just like okay, it's like really AS3 interaction animation. So that was the big thing back then. So it was like 2009 when I just graduated from uni. So that was the thing I was, I thought I was going to do. So in the end, next thing is the JS. It's a JS era. So I went big into JavaScript. So uh, JavaScript was the like I think because my first love was like web. I started with HTML, CSS, doing uh, coding with LiveJournal. So Blogspot, then I make blog skins. Then I started into like uh, uh, because I was still studying, but I like to write blog. Like you know those teenage years, you like to write like cringy uh, blog posts. Then I decided, hey, yeah, I want to make my own blog skin. The blog skin is so nice. Uh, I want to make. My own version. I, I start to design in Photoshop. Like, uh, then I start to say like, oh, maybe this box game doesn't look very nice. Next week I start changing it again. So I keep like paying my head to my CSS. So I start learning to CSS, like during that time. So uh, then for JavaScript, it was like I didn't really touch JavaScript programming. So it was just plain HTML CSS. So now uh, I got into programming. So. I got to learn JavaScript for real. So, uh, but during that time, my programming skill wasn't really that good. It was really bad. But with JavaScript, I find that it's better. I sort of forced myself to like really pick up because when you start learning programming, you find that uh, there was a time where you try to figure out your if and else statement, then like switch statement. How do you piece them together and solve your problem? So that was the hurdle you had to sort of like. Force yourself to go into. So I was in that stage, like then I'm like, uh, then it was like, like depression mode, it's like oh yeah, I think you're good, then boom, crash, then you're like, oh what happened? Why why am I like the worst human in the world? Like why can't you do this? Am I stupid? Am I like yeah? Basically that was like, then suddenly you just force yourself to keep doing doing. Then it's like yeah, so you you be okay, you be okay. Yes. So uh, so I got into web. Then it was web API era, so it was like the JavaScript. So I got into Polymer web components. Then uh, in my previous company, we are doing uh, web audio technology, so it's very, very cool. So we start to do stuff like web audio. So you get to learn some web audio synthesis and things like that. Then you do some cool things with uh, uh, audio. And we do some web stuff. So um, also in the meantime, I also like, pick up Node.js, React. Like, so it's like a lot of things. Then uh, when I joined SP Digital, we, for some reason, I got to do iOS. So when I joined, it's like I was a front-end developer. I think it was a story that was very famous. And so uh, then the project, they, they have a lot of projects running. Then they lack an uh, iOS developer. Then I was thinking to the team that, oh, uh, we need to get this out in like next two months. Like, can, you, can you do this? Then I'm like, but yeah, I can know a bit of iOS, but can, you, can we do it now? Then like, okay, suddenly I'm an iOS developer in Swift. It's like, what, what, what did I have? How did that happen? But yes, it happened. So it happened for the next one year. I was doing Swift. 
Then uh, we have projects on Ruby on Rails. Uh, well, it was quite tough uh, learning two different languages. Because iOS by itself is quite a large library. Uh, Swift is quite a big library. It's not easy. It's easy to pick up, but it's not easy to be really good at because the language is so big. And uh, iOS frameworks is a whole big rabbit hole in itself. Uh, yeah. It's not. Uh, you think that it's very nice, but once you get into it, it's not so pretty. Yes, it's very not so pretty. Uh, Ruby on Rails is actually quite good. Uh, because I actually touched PHP in Zen framework before, and Ruby on Rails somehow comes out as a breath, really a fresh breath of air. It's like really very nice. Then I also touched a bit of Golang, because the back end we are using Go. So uh, Go is not bad, you know, see. Uh, better, it's a modern C, I would say. Yep. Yep. So, okay. so the next thing I picked up was, I realized that like, learning all these things, how do I manage to pick up all these things? Uh, uh, I think it's basics versus frameworks. You need to have really good foundation. So I guess that I realized that I can learn things, you can learn pick up things over the years. Like, got the really changes, how you actually pick up is to have a really good foundation. Like, based on what you learn in like, which you know, you feel, like, what is the common thing that among them is the design patterns, the architecture, the coding, if else, they learn, it's all the same. So, what different is just the frameworks and just the little grammar. So, basic actually is very important. So, there was this uh, famous tweet that I saw one day uh, about long-term investment. You should invest in HTML. The left side is the HTML CSS and JavaScript versus all the frameworks. They will maybe a new bootstrap is this kind of dying. And Angular is not so popular anymore. So I guess this is quite uh, obvious. Like you should invest. Because if you know JavaScript, you should you will be able to pick up other frameworks quite easily. So yeah. So next thing is about working in general. So I realized that working like to learn about agile processes, you need to be in a company. You can't really like well small company, big companies they are different. So I get to work in small companies, guys is very fortunate and you can also get to work in big companies and things really is uh, different in scale, uh, also different in many ways, like they can't compare to each other. So agile or not, yeah, yes, no, it's a buzzword I would say. So what's most important is to get the correct workflow. And you, based on the people, you know how to work. And code reviews, uh, realize code reviews is very important. Uh, it's very good to realize uh, if the developer even really happen to have good comments, really left very meaningful uh, reviews, actually you learn a lot. Really, really learn a lot. And yes, uh, type programming is my next favorite thing. I think one, I think in SP Digital, uh, we have people who I work with, uh, they are big in pair programming. So, and, Actually, um, to pick up iOS and Ruby on Rails, how can I learn so fast? Because you learn by pairing. So you see if somebody is really good, and you see how they actually do it. And it's, it's, like, it's different from being a tutorial. So in tutorial, you just read and maybe you stumble or things like, oh, why, how this happen? But if you pair with somebody who's really good, they will straight away tell you, oh, you actually can do it this way, or why this happened. So it's really like 100% extreme programming code review in that intense to our So basically you're laser focused in the task and you're not doing anything else. Like you don't serve a web, you don't like uh, eat or anything. So it's like very tired of the then you take a break. Is it right? It's really very good, I will say. Okay, so next thing. It's not exactly programming. So um, I get to know about this podcast by the, the famous five by five if you know about uh, it's an American a podcast by Dave Benjamin. So he has a podcast show about, uh, he has a, this podcast cha uh, channel about uh, Quit. So actually, the, this, this podcast was an Asian Asian demand as Quit. So basically, this podcast is about like uh, people who are like stuck in their old jobs. Then they want to do their unexpected thing. Like maybe you are working as a uh, maybe a programmer, you want to start your startup, you want to start the next big thing. Then they are worried about. Like, I want to start the Obama business, but I don't have money. So people start calling him, then he started this show about how he does it. Because he was, he was working in somewhere, then he started this podcast from zero to something. So this is all about. But 
even then, right, he also talked about a lot of things about working life and how you should uh, present yourself. So even though it's quite American, but some of the things actually make sense. Like, for example, um, he talked about things like not don't coast. So coast means you're stagnant, right? So he, like this topic about coasting, meaning like if you notice that you're stagnant, like quickly quit your job and find something that to make yourself uncomfortable, basically. Like, I find that this is actually quite useful because if you are finding you're not learning, you're not doing, maybe you should like find something that is really like you're not used to uncomfortable with, like me. I study JavaScript and study and learn in hours. Actually, I learned a lot about uh, working and uh, code in general, which is really good, yes. So, yeah. And next thing is about history. Uh, I realized that, like, junior dev, uh, like if you come into web programming, it's like, wow, well, how this thing happen? Uh? Like, you don't know why like, things just the way it is. So, I realized that history, you knowing the history of things actually is quite helpful. Like, maybe you don't know, like, oh, how does, how come is a certain API, for example, CSS came about? Like, why is this clear fix of CSS in the, how does it come about? Why, why, why do we have clear fix and how does it evolve? So, there was a huge history, I think there was an article about how clear fix. Uh, actually went because there was only floats. You can only do that in floats. Then Clearfix came. Then suddenly uh, a browser update, then things get changed. So actually it's quite good to know about such things because it helps you and you talk to seniors and or they talk about things and you don't know about how, how to, uh, like you don't have uh, yeah. well yes. Okay. So um, now the topic like your job or trades must have none or your specialization. So I realized that there's different things like if your job or trades you learn everything, yeah, it's very good. Uh, but the thing is you're only touching the surface. Then uh, certain things like dev uh, dev stuff, like very deep stuff, you don't really get to know a lot. Like uh, for example, I always say you need to actually have a deep I realized that to do iOS well, you actually need to know Objective-C for some reason. Because that workflow or Objective-C, you don't know this. Like, oh, actually there's a history of certain why uh, table view, UI table view has this certain bug. Uh, because it's go back to history, uh, why Apple does it this way, then it was like that. Then it's like, well, how, really? Like, yeah, so things happen. So, and specialization, it also has its own problems. And like, oh, you are stuck in this own, JavaScript that you don't know anything about the rest. So I think it has its own uh, pros and cons. So you have to, I guess you have to, we are, in, we are in one area, you need to be, know that you need to be on the other area. Things like that. Yeah. So I guess that's the end of my talk. Yeah. So it's a very short 10 minutes. Uh, yeah. Thank you.